right, ladies and germs. I know it's been a long time coming, but we knew that there were gonna be some big changes coming down the pipe real soon for the last couple years, and they did it in 2024. They've now brought out the center-cooled version of the Milwaukee 8. That's what the new engine platform is called. And they've redesigned the heads, they've redesigned the intake runner, the throttle body. It's now got a cam position sensor. There's a lot of differences. It's got a completely new ECM. We were hoping that we could coincide a cam shootout video with this bike, which we are now able to do. Got a hold of some people. We have a completely separate ECU, so it's not using the Harley controller at all. And we are actually riding the program for these motorcycles to do this cam shootout. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of work because we got a lot of cams on this one. Come with me, let's get started. You know, those two pieces of metal used to be one piece of metal. If you didn't bite your nails, you'd have got that off a little faster. Hey. hey. Look, you got all four of them. Now my hands are all slick. Uh, yeah. I mean, when you push this in, it definitely, it definitely hits something. <laughs> There's something back there. I think it's a flywheel. I'm trying to get this thing up. There, I'm trying to use the leverage of the plate. <laughs> you know, I feel like this is one of the most important components in the engine. It is the PT Camder slash VT MISC coupe <laughs> And, and without it, you are in deep shit. Is that German? I should get a slow-mo of this. Go fast, Juice. <laughs> the oil pump works. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll torque it into position. There you go. Should be set at 34. <laughs> I mean, there's really no other way we'd be able to do all this in seven minutes, unless we both did it at the same time. That's right. Right here. I'm Jamie Lima with Michael Van Orton, Nick Zanola. We are Moonshine Harley Davidson, Moonshine Horsepower. And we are doing our cam shootout number two, version number two. And why it's number two is Harley has released a brand new head and motor setup on the bikes called the center cooled version of the M8. And it debuted on the CVOs first in 2023. So all the CVOs for 2023 had it and rolling into 2024, it is on the Road Glide models, whether it's your standard Road Glide or one of the Screaming Eagle CVO models. Um, they all have the center cooled heads. Also, the Street Glides in the normal model and the Screaming Eagle CVO versions also have the center cooled heads. So, this is kind of the third platform we have on an M8. And the first versions of it in 17, we had two different ones. We had a twin cooled, which had two radiators on either side of the bike and it was on your limiteds and your bigger bikes. And then we had 
your oil air cooled version, which through oil through the passages of the middle of the head to cool them off. So this one being called the center cooled M8 is it has one radiator in the middle of the bike. The passages in the head are a lot larger. The hoses going to the head are larger and Harley has documented that it is reducing the temps of the exhaust in the head by 50 degrees. Big difference, it's enough where if you're coming off of the previous model M8 to the newer center cool version, you are gonna feel a difference in heat reduction from that motor. Um, also with designing the center cooled system, they have made new ports in the head. It's a brand new intake port. It's a bigger throttle body right from the manufacturer. It's a 58 millimeter and it's allowing the inside valve on the close turn of the intake to actually flow better numbers, which you're about to see on all the cam data we're going to give you here shortly. The boys in the shop have spent a solid week taking a brand new 2024 Road Glide we had at the dealership and installing seven different cams in the motorcycle to bring you this data. We did this back in 2018 and it was a huge success for, for the cams and for what customers were looking to have installed in their bike. And we did it again. And this is probably the first round because now that the heads flow different numbers, we're all going to start working on a cam that outperforms these cams. So this is probably round one, I would say, for the cams because these are the current cams we were running on the first version M8, which now we're running on the second version M8, which is the center cooled setup. So. Um, well, in our cam shootouts were that way too, because we did the first cam shootout, which was the first cams that everybody came out with. And then we did, a couple years later, we did another cam shootout that had uh, updated data. And now here we're using basically what we did on that cam shootout as our first ver iteration of the 24s. And I imagine by December, we're gonna have, I don't think there's gonna be any lifts under 500. Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, the springs can handle it now in the head right from the factory. The heads flow great at that lift over 500 from the stock setup with the new intake manifold and the throttle body. And um, we'll dive into the numbers and uh, show you what we've come up with. So there's currently no one that I'm aware of that has been able to unlock the ECM. I think um, it's going to be really difficult this time around, especially with the VVT technology that is kind of integrated into it. So what we did was we, there's a, a couple of companies that are making aftermarket computer controllers, ECUs, and we got a hold of one of those and programmed that one to do our tests. And that will be offered as a off-road version while we wait for any a more streetable alternative other than the uh, Screaming Eagle tuner, which we have included the Screaming Eagle cam in this because it is definitely a contender. So if you're worried about making your motorcycle unstreetable, you don't really have to because the Screaming Eagle 511 actually performed very well. And um, here is a video of the graph with us tuning the Screaming Eagle 511 and a can tune from Harley Davidson. You can see they did a very good job on that tune. So right out of the box, if you are worried about warranty implications or what is it, DOT regulations? Well, if you depending on don't where you live, to be off road. Yeah, depending on where you live and, and what your restrictions are, you might be, you, you know, you might have to go down this path. And if that's the path you have to stick to, it's a great option. It's the best we've ever seen. Yeah. from an OEM manufacturer, from Harley-Davidson, right. out of the box with their Stage 2s. Um, Mike made a comment earlier, a couple of years ago, you would have laughed about their, their cam setup as a valuable option for someone for a Stage 2. But now, with the new design and what they've done and everything they've learned from racing these bikes, it's a great option. Plus, I think, they, I think the manufacturer knows that they have to be a contender if they want to continue the game, you know, I mean, they can't just, they have to figure out a way to be able to appease the regulations and the customers at the same time. Otherwise people are just going to stop buying parts from them and just buy aftermarket, which is not a win for anybody. Right. And it, it's a big cam for a stage two. It's a 5.11 lift, 
It makes a lot of torque. It makes over 120 horsepower. Um, those are numbers we used to see on kind of a 120R race motor platform from Harley. You got a 120R from them, which was their race only crate engine. And it made 135 foot pounds of torque and 125 horsepower with the right exhaust on it. And to get that out of a stage two directly from Harley Davidson is outstanding. Yeah, ten, 10 years ago, no one would be talking about anything we're talking about today. <laughs> <laughs> For everything you're going to see here, all of our cam testing, it was all done on the same exact motorcycle. It was a 2024 Harley Davidson Road Glide. And the intake we put on that, Nick, was the Harley Davidson. Extreme Wedge. Extreme Wedge, really nice air cleaner setup from Harley Davidson. It performed really well on the shootout. The exhaust we chose to run on this was the same exhaust we did on our initial shootout years ago. It was the D&D Billet Cat. It's just a really well-performing exhaust. It's one of the most sold exhausts in the country. Sounds great, performs well, looks well. So that is the setup we had on this motorcycle. The throttle body was the stock 58 millimeter. New setup on the bikes, stock intake manifold with just swapping cams, lifters, push rods. That's it. That's all this bike got. And of course we had to tune it. So depending on the graph you're looking at here, they were all tuned with a setup we are currently running until the market opens up and we have alternative options available to us. Well, let's start off with the, the Andrews 485. That made an impressive 131 horsepower and 130 torque, almost square. And uh, all these are going to be really close. And the reason that we chose these cams is because these are very well-performing cams all around. There, there are cams that are going to make more horsepower than these. That, that's a given. And there are also cams that may make a little bit more on the torque side. But these are all going to be fairly square. So you're going to get a lot of really low end power right off of the, the stop, which is what everybody actually wants. Everybody says that they want a piece of paper that has the highest horsepower, but everybody really wants to be able to leave the line and feel the locomotive move. Yeah, off idle. What Mike's talking about is that initial hit when you're getting off the clutch, getting into the throttle and the bike's starting to move. All these cams perform really well, leaving the line off idle. Um, there's a lot of cams we deal with that make more horsepower, but leaving, um, they don't do so well and they have a bigger dip in the beginning. So we took all those cams and we'll do something with those later. And most of the time on those larger cams, we're pairing those with more cubic inch anyway. Right. Because it fixes the bottom problem. So these are probably the best all around performing cam with having max torque off the line and still carrying out a rather impressive overall horsepower number. Right. We did the fueling 472, 129 horsepower, 131 <laughs> torque. The Psychorama CR 480, 126 horsepower and 136 torque. That was the highest torque producing cam of the lot. And this, the Psychorama also has a 485 that is going to basically flip those numbers. It's gonna give you probably closer to 120 to 125 torque, but you're gonna have a higher uh, horsepower 135, 106 horsepower, which is why we chose the 480 over the 485 because the 480 is more of a low end torque cam, but you're still getting 126 uh, or still getting 126 horsepower to 130 horsepower, depending on the situation. So it's no slouch at all. We ran the MHP 485 that made 131 horsepower and 135 torque. The Screaming Eagle 511, the dark horse of the group, 121 horsepower and 130 foot-pounds of torque, and one of the flattest torque curves in the whole, in the whole bunch. I was real impressed with the, the Screaming Eagle. And then we ran the Wood Performance 22XE, 127 horsepower and 133 torque. And then the final cam that we ran was another MHP cam. It was the 492. And that one made 131 torque and 134 horsepower. And that one we threw into the mix because I think that those are going to be, these higher lift cams are going to be the future of these engines with this design. Yeah, and the Harley Screaming Eagle, it's a, it's a 511 lift, so it's over 500. Our MHP 492, the name's a little deceiving because the 492 is the exhaust lift. The intake lift on that cam is a 522 intake lift. And this new head design 
and intake path is wanting a little bit more lift and it can handle more lift with it being a stock head. Most of the time we'd have to get you a ported head or um, an aftermarket head done with bigger valves to be able to run these cams. And now we're able to do it on this stock platform. Um, something that's real intriguing is we're gonna show you what the MHP 45 did on a stock 2024 center cooled setup compared to what it did on the motor before. And what we've done is we've taken a 117. They're both 117. So the 2024 is a 117. The, the, the graph Mike's about to go over right now is gonna be on an ST version, which also had a 117, same cubic inch. The only difference is the 2024 is completely stock. The 2023 has a Screaming Eagle 64 millimeter throttle body, and it has a 64 millimeter intake manifold to get the results that Mike's can go over here while the other one is a stock configuration and it's a massive difference. If you look at what the 485 MHP did in the 2024 versus what it did in the 2023 on your screen, the 2024 made 135 foot pounds of torque where the 23 made 129 and the 2024 made 131 horsepower and the 2023 made 123. Now granted, all we did on the 2024 bike was put in the cam, a two into one D and D exhaust and tune it. Whereas on this 2023 model, which, you know, we always have these on the floor for sale. It's also a 117. So they had the same displacement. It also has an MHP 485 cam, but we added a 64 millimeter throttle body and the exhaust. So you have to add additional parts and still not make the power with this new engine design. So it's really impressive. Yeah, I mean, the head's picking up multiple multiple areas. So from low lift numbers, low RPMs, it's producing a lot more torque. Same cam, like we explained, in the different setups, we're 10 foot pounds of torque on the bottom. And it carries a pretty linear line above it all the way across. But once you hit 4,500 RPMs, you can see the head's breathing a lot better as well. Mm -hmm. So from 45 on up, now we're making a lot more power and it finished eight horsepower more on the top end. So it is a significant off the bottom and anything over 4,500 RPMs as well. It's just, uh, it, it's a game changer. Yeah, and that's the, the new intake track flow and the larger throttle body to allow it to not only get more air, but be able to utilize the air more efficiently. So what, what Harley's done to improve the whole flow of the induction system is they've now gone from a 55 millimeter throttle body to a larger 58 millimeter throttle body. They have a brand new intake manifold design. Look at this guy. It's a shorter intake. They're putting the throttle body closer. Since the throttle body is larger, it gets more volume of air in there, but they've taken the ports and they've made the ports wider and they've really reduced the angle of these turns into the head. You can see it right here in this intake manifold. Um, this turn is a lot less than this older design right here. This is a stock one. This one right here is a 64 millimeter Harley one for the original design, but this new manifold out of the box is outflowing both of them. And it's feeding the inside valve of this head, which is leading to the results you're seeing here on paper on these dyno graphs. All right, so in my opinion, I think the two best cams, the two winners for this setup would be our Moonshine 485 cam. In my opinion, I'd say that's the number one cam because it's an all-purpose setup for us. It's going to be a, a cam you can put on a bike and go travel on. You can be two up with it. You're loaded down. But you can also go rip with your buddies if you want to have that cam in there, too. It makes great torque off the bottom. You're over 120 pounds of torque, about 2,400 RPMs, and it's very flat torque curve all the way out to about 5,000. If you're going to do a cam that's going to be more for a ripper, I would do our Moonshine 492 cam. That cam obviously makes the most power on the top, and it it is a little cam that's soft on the bottom, but which isn't a bad thing because if you want more power, you're going to be above that 3,500 RPM range anyway. Well, now we've, we've taken these cams and instead of running six or seven different ones all the time, because on the last cam shootout, we had torque cams that made a lot more torque on the bottom, signed off on horsepower a lot earlier. We had cams that were really strong in the middle, and then we had cams that were stronger on the end when we did our original cam shootout. Now, because we've had more time to develop stuff, the reason why Nick's picking the MHP 45 is it is a torque cam. It's producing just as much torque as all the other ones. One that beat it by a touch is the CR 480. But the difference is after about 3,800 RPMs, the 480 
starts to taper off while the MHP45 keeps carrying. And they're relatively almost identical from the bottom to 3,800 RPMs. The MHP is now producing one of the top horsepowers we have on the graph as well. Um, it produced 131 horsepower. Only a couple other camps produce that kind of power, which you had the Andrews 45 produce 131, but it didn't have the strong bottom on the torque or mid on the torque. You had the fueling 472 produce 129, but once again, that one didn't have a strong torque numbers on the bottom or the middle. You can see the line across the graph, it's down five horsepower relatively the whole torque curve on it. Well, and you can look at the RPM range, the, the 485 and the CR480, they both made their peak torque at 2,700 RPMs, whereas the, the 485, it made, made 130 foot-pounds of torque, but not till 3,400 RPMs. Yeah, so, so we go to that predominantly for both because now you're getting the best of both worlds. You're getting the initial torque numbers you want. You're getting a really good mid-range torque cam, and it's producing a lot of horsepower. Um, and that's why it's a go-to for us, and it kind of shines on this graph. Now, I believe soon, later in the year, next year, other cams will come to market, and they might pass that cam. The other cam we want to talk about is, like Nick mentioned, if you're a ripper and you're just beating on your bike, you're always in the RPMs. So I want to... Um, make sure you understand that you like to ride 3000 and above and you're single, you're not loaded down, you're not riding two up all the time, two ups are kind of rare for you. The MHP 492 cam is the winner on horsepower. So if you were racing and that's what you're doing with the stage two, you would win the races with the MHP 492 in your bike when riding correctly, shifting correctly with that cam. Um, great cam for mid to top, it's not the best choice for the bottom. So if we're riding two up, we're definitely gonna push you more towards MHP 45. If you're a Psychorama fan, we'll push you towards their 480 because of what it does here on the graph as well. Great cam off the bottom, awesome cam for all around riding as well. Yeah, and, and the reason we're not gonna talk about a lot of the other cams on this sheet, it, it's hard to. When they're not shining and they're not producing a higher torque number or a higher horsepower, they're getting B on both of them. We'll talk about them when those manufacturers develop their 2.0 cam, which they're coming. They're coming. Hold on. All right. Well, that wraps up pretty much the brand new 2024 center cooled M8 cam shootout from us. And, and this is the first version, like we said in the video, until more cams are released. We will have more to come soon. Um, this will get us started for guys trying to get their bikes up and running now with what's on the market. This is your data, okay? We'll have more soon. When we do, we'll post it, we'll put it up. This is version one of the Center Cooled Cam Shootout, version two, down the road. Call us. Yeah, and if you have questions on this, it's real simple. Send us an email, horsepower at moonshineharley.com. Please put your phone number in there. Um, we are gonna call the customers that put their phone numbers in the email first because it's easier for us to have a conversation when it's lengthy. We gotta talk about exhaust choices, the riding style you're doing and everything. It takes too much time on email to go back and forth. If you email us, please let us know the bike, what kind of riding you're doing, what you're looking for too. It'll kind of allow myself, Mike, and Nick to be armed with your setup before we call you and the phone call is gonna be quicker and easier on both of us. Um, if you need to call the shop, phone number's right here on the screen, give us a ring. Ask for one of the guys' horsepower team. We have a lot of cool team members on the Moonshine Harley-Davidson staff. We only have a couple guys that are on the Moonshine horsepower team. It's going to be Nick Zanola over here to my right, Michael Van Orden in the middle, and myself, Jamie Lima. And I think we should probably just do a live Q&A after we let everybody digest this so that we can answer individual questions. Because at this point, you know, I, I, none of it's new. So I yeah. think that... Uh, we should have that coming up next.